Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 799, where I'm going to show you how to make a diamond grinding wheel dresser. Now, you watched me use this in the last video, which was 798, when I showed how to dress your bench grinder wheels. So, this is kind of a simple project, but I think it's enjoyable. Some of you might want to make one. However, you can buy one for about $115. It's called a Geiger available from all industrial suppliers and I'll put a link in the description for that and I will also show you a picture of that right now. Now in addition to this little dresser I will show you a couple of other alternate designs as extra credit at the end of this video. Now, if you did not have a chance to see the previous video, the general principles here are we have a diamond right here and an adjustment right here to advance the diamond into the wheel and this little angle here will ride up against the edge of the tool rest and you just feed it back and forth across as shown in the other video. Now I'm going to depart from this design just a little bit here. I'm going to make it straight. This is the original prototype that I just made out of wood. Just took a minute just to check for measurements. So here's another one. This is what I'm going to make today out of steel of course. A little bit of milling, a little bit of drilling and tapping and that'll just run straight back and forth across the wheel. If you watched the previous video, you may remember that I talked about all of these different types of diamond dressers and the wheel type of dresser that I do not like. Now I'm going to use a diamond and I have a whole box of diamond nibs. So I'll select one out of here that will suit my purpose. Now if you need a diamond nib, you're going to be able to get them from any industrial supplier, but I suppose they're going to run in the $40 or $50 category. They're not real cheap, but do not confuse these with the diamond ring like you gave to your girlfriend. What do you need in the way of materials besides the diamond nib? Well, you need some uh, 3 8 rod or 3 8 fine bolts. Remember, I'm going to change the design here from a coarse thread to a fine thread, which I, will I think will make it a lot more useful and a more accurate advancement of the diamond into the wheel. But this is a piece of three-quarter inch by inch and a half cold rolled steel. And it was all one piece, just a piece of scrap I had here in the shop. And I cut it in half and made the first half into this. And we'll use the second half today. So again, it's one and a half by two inches. Remember, there's no drawings for this. It's three-quarters thick. And looking on this side, if you want to make it tapered, that's about a 10 degree and it's three quarters wide right here. Now that's going to vary depending upon your tool rests on your machine. So you have to custom make this. But if you look at that picture of the Geiger that I just showed you, it has two of these tapers, one on each side that have different widths right here, uh, again, to accommodate different grinder, different manufacturers. For some reason, I do not know what, but both sides of this were surface ground many, many decades ago. So I just need to clean up the ends and I probably won't show that. But this little lip here will be 3 8 wide. And the depth is about 150 thousandths. That's not too critical. It needs to be a little bit deeper here than what the thickness of your tool rust is or thereabouts. It's just not critical. You'll have to design your own. Let me know if anyone out there actually makes one of these. You see here the whole principle of this thread here is this so that you could advance the diamond nib into the work and you only need Oh, a half of inch of movement at the very, very most. There's a shoulder on my nib here, which I'll talk about in a minute. But notice that I have a little lock nut that's knurled right here so that we would take a pass, loosen this, and feed it in just a little bit. And that's why I want to go from 3816 to 3824. I already said that. But let's take a look at how this is made. And I've got a set screw here. And let me take 
the neural knob off and I'll spin this off so the nib is held onto the screw thread by a step down that is uh, well I drilled and reamed a hole into the the nib and these are about 7 16 in diameter and 2 inches long and I had several of these and they hold about a one-third or one-half carat diamond the size of the diamond doesn't really matter much and I'll talk more about this assembly as we move along here but now the bluing has dried so I'm going to mark this at 3 8 and let's go over to the mill and mill that off most of the footage I show you today will be sped up to get through this as quickly as we can I'm over at the milling machine now and the work is setting on two parallels I'm just about ready to start milling here but should you desire to make one at the 10 degree angle or the angle of your choice turn your vise to 10 degrees if you have a swivel type vise I was at 10 so now I'm going to move it back to zero and tighten the bolts and then I am ready to mill. Alright, I'll bring the cutter down until I touch off. Back it away a little bit. Now I'm going to raise the table up with the knee crank. You cannot see that. 125 thousandths for my roughing cut. And this is a roughing end mill. Niagara. Now I raise the table up another 25 thousandths. I'm getting a pretty good finish with this roughing cutter, so I'll take it down a few thousandths more and I'm done. Okay, I made a mistake. A few minutes ago I told you that this piece was two inches long. Well, it's three inches long. So, I put some bluing on the edge. Now notice I'm just doing this on the table without a surface plate. Plenty accurate for what we're doing. I'm laying out the hole now. And I'll center punch that. Actually, I'm going to take it over to the milling machine and do the drilling and probably the tapping over there. But let me explain this hole to you right now. All right, looking at this hole now, it's a 3 8 clearance from this side. I'll put my thumb right there. So you can see that we only have, oh, I don't know, 3 8 of an inch or so of thread and this of course will make it fine so when I put it into the milling machine I'm going to put it in from this side drill all the way through for the tap drill size for 3 h 24 I forgot what that is offhand and uh, then I'll come back with the 3 h drill and drill to that depth whatever it is okay the thread will be 3 8 24. I've got a handful of them and we have to get out our letters and the tap drill size for 3 8 24 is a Q as in quick. The work is back in the vise held vertically. I will remove the parallel so I do not hit that with the drill nor do I want to hit the vise and I've already located my layout hole 
the intersection of those two lines using a wiggler. So now I'll set it up and center drill it. And now the Q drill all the way through. Now for the 3 8 drill. Remember I'm not going all the way through and I do have my stop set for that. I have flipped the work over and very carefully located it. And this is a 3 8 24 tap. I'm in back here, slow speed. Looks good. Okay, it's looking good so far. We've got a fine thread. We've got a clearance hole. Now, since I'm changing from coarse to fine, I've got a little problem here. I bet I've got a thousand feet of threaded rod of all sizes, and every last bit of it is coarse thread. So I went to two or three stores looking for 3 8 24 all thread, could not find any, finally gave up. Now there is a possibility of using a fine thread bolt, but most of these that you're going to find in a fine thread are hardened, although this one isn't, but generally you're not going to find fine thread bolts that have very much thread on them. So my solution, I'm taking some 3 8 rod and I'll put it in the lathe and I'll make my own threaded rod and I'm going to make four inches worth right up to that line. I was getting ready to thread the rod here and uh, I had a little problem. Originally I was going to use this Cleveland die holder and that would be held in the tailstock chuck, but I realized I do not have the depth that I need here. I can only thread about two inches using this. So plan B here is the work and there's the layout line right there is held in the tailstock and you can't see it here but this is the 3 8 fine inch and a half OD die held in the chuck and I'll be running this at slow speed using lots of oil and hope it doesn't tear up the thread too badly. Well, that's not a very good looking thread. Kind of looks like a rat knot on it. However, it will work. You know, those dies really aren't made for power threading. You need to back them off. And I'm not sure what alloy this is, but that's going to have to do for now. All right, let's talk about these diamond nibs again. I had a whole box of these and there were three or four that are this size. Exactly. Now, they're 11 millimeter OD. I don't know why. As I said, it's a pretty good sized diamond, but I don't know what you're going to have. So you're going to have to vary from what I'm telling you here to accommodate whatever diamonds you come up with. Like here's a brand new one, I think. Still in the keeper. And yet another brand new one. But these other ones, I believe, are used. Not believe, they are used. Now another possibility is to take one of these real small ones and drill a hole in the end of this and insert it. So that's a very real possibility, but I'm going to keep with what I've been doing here. As I told you, I already reamed a hole in here, quarter inch, off camera, and it goes all the way into where that black mark is, however deep that is. Now this is longer than what I need. I am going to both turn it down and shorten it. And I've already drilled the hole. So you can see there are several uh, things that need to be done to this or whatever you are using. And this little step here is just fine. You know, I could take that all the way down to the end, but then there's nothing to hang on to in the lathe. So the diameter right here is three eighths. And uh, where's my ruler here? So the overall is 1.4 inches and that is 
call it one inch. So the next thing I'm going to do is put this in the lathe and turn it down. Well, I'll have to put another mark on there to that line. Okay, take a look what we got here. The diamond is held just a little bit into the three jaw chuck. There's not much of a grip on it, but it's fully supported by a ball bearing center that just runs into that quarter inch hole. It's not a center hole, but it'll work just fine. I've got a stop set so I do not run into the chuck. Okay, we're done. And it fits perfectly. Of course, this has to be cut off a little bit. I'll do that now off camera. Okay, this is the threaded rod. Turned down to quarter inch, about five eighths back. And that will be held on with Loctite. And while I was cutting this, I was getting the most horrible long stringy chips. So the alloy that I was using here was not a good alloy for threading. So that's why the thread is so chopped and torn up, but it's going to have to do as I said before. Good morning. It's the next day. And you know I had a little insomnia last night. While I was laying in my bed of affliction, I became ashamed and humiliated at this horrible thread that the rat gnawed on. So when I got up this morning, I did a thorough search down here through my shop, and it took over 15 minutes, but I did find a piece of leaded alloy screw machine stock and I already while you were not looking threaded it again in the lathe and the thread is ten times better and smoother so I had already put the diamond onto this piece with Loctite but I was able to remove it rather quickly with a little torch a little heat and it came right off and there you can see the setup Loctite from the other day and in review now I don't know if I did this or not, but this quarter inch reamed hole is 5 eighths thick. So I will again Loctite that on there and after about a half hour and after I eat my poached egg I'll be down to continue the next step which will be to cut it off and then to make the little knurled knobs. I'm getting close to being done here and it has been a long video. Well, while the Loctite is setting up, I think we'll go ahead and start the knobs here. Now, this is the old one, the coarse threaded one that I made as a prototype. And notice there's a lock, a knurl, lock knot there, and a little knurl knob here. Now, those two don't match, and what a, the way I got those is I found knobs in my junk drawer here. And I, I just faced them off and re-threaded them and so on. But they're mismatched, and I'm ashamed of them. I thought maybe I could do something with these two knobs, but nah, I'm going to start over. So I've got a piece of aluminum here someplace, yeah, right here. And this is 7 eighths. And I'll go ahead and knurl the other end, and we'll cut them off and put a step on them and face them and all that good stuff. And uh, let's go on over and knurl this. I don't think I'll show all of the other steps. All right, the aluminum stock is held in the three-jaw chuck. The machine is set at slow speeds, slow spindle speed, that is. Now, I think most of the free world knows how much I loathe this type of knurler, so, of course, I'm not using it. I'm using the brown and sharp type. Let's get knurling.
looking pretty good. Just about ready to cut off here. I've already tapped the hole and knurled it and stepped it down and now we'll cut off. Okay, in the interest of brevity, I skipped a few steps there, and I cleaned this up on the abrasive machine. It looks pretty good. doesn't photograph well because of the shininess. It's all cleaned up. Well, in the meantime, this Loctite has set up. I put just a little bit of a flat right here so that this 832 set screw that I drilled and tapped in there will lock into that place, not damage the threads if I want to take it apart. And here's the little nut, lock nut that I made. Notice that I put just a little bit of a built-in washer there that will move up against, well I guess it's this side, like that, as you lock it. Now let me tell you something here as I assemble this. As far as I remember on the uh, Geiger, they had a little bit of an o-ring on here to keep the swarf and dust out of there because as you know it would bind up the thread and maybe dust will get in there I really don't know but let me go ahead and assemble this now This is probably way too long. I should chop it off. This is a real quick demonstration on this. If you want more details on how to use a dresser, refer back to tip 798 but uh, keep a fairly close space right in here but if you run out of travel you can adjust your tool rest but as you can see this will fit right up on there and slide back freely make sure that you have a nice clean burr free surface right here and that this surface here or this edge is perfectly parallel with the shaft of the machine and with our fine threaded right here I have a lot of control over it and then we can lock it if we want before you turn your machine on make sure that it this uh, that it clears wear eye protection and I'll run it across there just one or two times advancing it a little bit this wheel doesn't really need dressing right now You could see that at all, but I could feel the grit coming off on my hand. So it can work quite well. Looking at the back side now, you can make these either way with the angle or straight. And maybe the advantage of the Geiger type is that the diamond is being presented to the wheel at an angle like, like that as you go across as opposed to being perfectly perpendicular. So as you rotate your diamond, it's going to be turning a little bit. As you feed it, you are, uh, oh, I guess, presenting new edges, if you will, so that the diamond would wear probably uniformly. I don't know if that's a big deal or not for the small home shop. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you make one of these or you got any improvements. I think I should shorten this up just a little bit. Matter of fact, I know I should, but I never will. Let's face it. Well, that concludes this rather lengthy video on how to make a dresser. Now, there's a lot of variations that could be made. So... This concludes this video, but stay tuned for extra credit where I show you some other ideas. I'm not going to make another one, but I want to show you a couple other ideas. So, 
See you next time. Thanks for watching, but stick with me. Thank you to those of you who are my better students for sticking around for the optional extra credit. Well, I want to talk first of all about the type of dresser that I had when I was back in my prime at the high school. And I'm, I was the one that ordered it probably about 1970 from Delta Rockwell. Now, not from this catalog. This is like 1950, but from a, maybe a 1970 catalog. And I'll show you the picture in this catalog of it. And then I have some pictures on my phone because I do not have the actual one to show you. The picture in here is so small you cannot make it out at all, but I just wanted to show it to you. But this is all that I have left of one of those, and that is the Rockwell Delta Diamond with the screwdriver type handle. Now in the pictures it has an older wooden type screwdriver handle. Alright, let's look at this. Okay, this is the Delta 7 inch grinder like I had at school. It had the cast iron pedestal and a water pot and I had these nice guards but they each took two bulbs and that was great but the bulbs had a life of about 30 minutes so you had to buy the bulbs by the case and they were kind of expensive bayonet type but anyway came with a pot and uh, there's some kind of sharpening fixture for plain blades but these were beautiful little cast iron tool rests that wrapped around the wheel. However, you had to remove those in order to mount this little uh, wheel dresser. Okay, on this page you can see that there are several accessories that were available for the Delta grinder, including a drill grinding fixture and that little other fixture I just showed you for plain irons and so on and a filter. But here is a tiny picture. I know you can't make it out of the wheel dresser and there's the diamond as I talked about with the wooden handle. Now I'm going to show you some pictures that I have on my phone that are a little better than this and I found them on the internet. Okay here are several pictures. You can see the diamond right here and this part right here and you'll see another view of it in a minute uh, is the part that is bolted on in place of the tool rest and it's a track. I guess you could say it's a track and then this part of the fixture can slide back and forth across the wheel. You can tighten the diamond into place right there with that set screw and then down here there's another thumb screw and a feeding mechanism here with a little knurl on it that allows you to feed the diamond into the wheel. Does that make any sense to you? And you move that back and forth across the wheel there are some other pictures of it. Yeah, I think you can make out the feeding mechanism a little better. And I don't know if they still sell this or not. And that is the fence, not the fence, the track from the bottom side. Pretty neat. I talked about this in one of the other videos, but this is a prototype that I made. It's just a piece of aluminum with that track that I talked about and this little rectangular piece of steel has the diamond nib with a set screw and this could be clamped onto the tool rest and the diamond moved back and forth. Now there is no feeding mechanism to engage the diamond deeper into the grind wheel so this needs a lot of work but it did work quite well when I used it off camera. But the grit gets in here and is kind of uh, grainy. All right, that's just an idea if anybody wants to carry through on that. I'm not going to carry through. That's the end of that. In about 1975, my brother and I had a get-rich scheme. And we designed and built a prototype for a little diamond dresser for a grinding wheel. And it had a lever that allowed you to traverse it back and forth across the face of the wheel. Now I do not have that. That's long gone or lost. I don't know what happened to it. There was only one of them, but we did invest money in advertising and it was an abject failure. So, and I can laugh about it now. So anyway, let's take a field trip out to the garage and take a look at my Lyle drill grinder. You've seen it before, but it has a built-in dresser that is very similar to the one that uh, my brother and I designed 
And uh, that's a possibility, but it would be a, kind of a difficult thing to make. But some of you guys out there with a lot of energy and, uh, and drive could, might make one. So let's take a walk out there and look at that, and then that will conclude this video. Okay, here's the Lyle drill grinder. I have removed temporarily the shield here for clarity. And this is normally used to sharpen drill bits, as you know, and I have videos on that when I restored this. But when you're grinding drills, you need a grind wheel that's in very good condition, so you have to dress it constantly. So Lyle provided one, and in, in order to use it, we take the attachment off for grinding drills, I'm like that. And then here is the diamond. There's the nib and the end. The lighting's not very good in here. And that will fasten in there like that. So with the diamond installed and this bolt tightened, notice that we have a lever down here. And the diamond can be moved back and forth across the wheel. And then there's a feeding mechanism to feed the diamond into the wheel and that is this little knurled knob here which is the same one that is used when we're grinding drills to advance the drill bit into the wheel. So we have a feeding mechanism here and we can move back and forth across the wheel. This really is an excellent system and I don't know if this is what inspired my brother and I to make that. I, I don't remember because I don't believe we had one of these back then. But there's an idea for you, and ours failed in the marketplace, but just showing you that for the fun of it. All right, that concludes the extra credit. Thank you for watching and sticking with me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Tell your friends about my channel, and I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.